Hello and welcome to Lady Cloth U on YouTube. If you're here, you're here for a number of reasons. You either are a budding designer and you're ready to start a collection but you don't know where to start. You're a small business or independent designer and you just want to start kind of small collections to kind of get your name out there. Or you're someone who wants to design for yourself, personal use, a small capsule collection for your closet with me made designs. Whichever one of those you are, you will benefit from this YouTube session where I just basically break down what goes into designing a collection from start to finish. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Designing a collection. So let's start off the presentation with our very first slide. What is a design collection? So here we have fashion designers create collections, not simply individual garments. Depending on the size of the design house, collection may have anywhere from 12 to 400 designs. So we're often talking about the stuff that we see in Fashion Week when that was happening, where we saw just a collection of designs uh, uh, going down the runway. Designers have to pay attention to every detail. So we're not just focusing on the just the outside of a garment, just the outside appeal of the garment. For me and my designs, when I'm creating dresses for clients, I also need to focus on, is this material is gonna be something that is going to be comfortable for them to move in? What underpinnings or underlining should I have? For example, the sequence, making sure that they don't rub against the client's skin underneath. Is there a considerable amount of lining so that you don't see any of their undergarments? So it's not just about what the garment looks like on the outside. You also want to keep in mind the functionality of a garment when you're creating it. Um, and after you've worked so hard to sort of like create a piece, the idea of a collection is to make sure that a client returns to you for future design. So you want to be creating a collection that can sort of hit different um, parts of a person's wardrobe, if that's something you're interested in doing. So if you're creating a top, you want to create complementing pants, maybe a complementing outerwear piece. So those are some concepts of what we call fashion design. So it's not just about the outward appearance. We talk about functionality. We also need to talk about making sure that we cultivate a collection that is something that a client might return to. Speaking the language. So what is some of those, uh, some of the lingo that you hear when you hear about collection and fabric story in the line? Why are those important terms to make sure that you not only you know, but you understand? A collection is a thematically cohesive group of garments created by a designer for a season. A category of clothing like outerwear, swimwear collection. So that is a collection. It is cohesive, there's a theme going on, and you can see that as each garment precedes the other. There is some sort of collectiveness about it and that you know it's coming from the same imagination. Fabric story. So a fabric story is a group of fabric samples conveying of the designer selections for a collection sometimes referred to as a fabric storyboard or fabrication. So the fabric story should be, and I'm going to show you that later on in the presentation, just a, usually just a sample of little pieces of scraps of fabric that you sort of like put together to begin to sort of imagine what these are going to look like when they're developed into actual design. So that's a fabric story, uh, a line. You often hear line being used as in, you know, interchangeable with collection but what a line actually is is the general silhouette or flow of the garment so when we're talking about the lines of a gown or the lines in a suit you're just talking about the silhouette how it form how it fits on the wearer and just the way that it flows so oftentimes you'll hear the word collection and you'll hear my line usually when we're referring to line we're talking about the silhouette of the garment and collection is its own separate word. Fashion is born from ideas. That is a quote that I want you guys to start thinking about and maybe write it somewhere so that when you are actually beginning to develop your designs, whether you're taking it from the initial inspiration right into the sketch, you need to know that fashion is born of ideas. So next we're going to move on to slide four. 
the five C's of good fashion design. So these are just some things, some key takeaways that you should be thinking about in the back of your mind when you're creating a collection. At the end of the day, all fashion designers or those who create products, you want your product to be successful. And fortunately, unfortunately, the way for a product to be successful is that it, it sells. It's something that sells and it's something that allows the person selling it to continue to grow their designs and their business. So first, we need to keep in mind customer, understanding who you're designing for. We're going to get into target customers shortly, but that is the first and foremost thing that you should be thinking about. Who is this for? And don't get yourself sort of like bogged down with the idea, oh, this is for everyone. It's not. And if it is, it's going to make your job a lot more complicated going forward. So decide who the garment is for, who is the collection for. Second, climate. Know the season of the year with which the collection is intended. That's very important too. So we're talking about specifics. So if you are somebody that's gonna focus on swimwear, that needs to be easily conveyed in the collection. If you're gonna be an outerwear designer who's focusing on outerwear, that needs to be a key point. For my designs, I focus on special occasions. So those designs are geared towards whether it's a collection or it's one-offs that I do for private clients. They are geared towards special occasions only. So they consist of gowns and formal and semi-formal pieces. So I don't focus so much on season. My, I focus more on customer. So three, concept. So what is going to be your big idea? What is that uh, exploring that big idea that's going to inspire the entire collection and that that sometimes is difficult for us creatives because we have so many ideas it's hard to like nail down that one idea but it's very important for you to sort of like focus on that one idea and see how it can inspire and sort of like spider out into an actual collection and again we'll go on to that in just a few slides to sort of see how you can take a simple photo or something very small and sort of like begin to develop something from there. Uh, the four C of a good design collection is determining the suitable color palette. That's very important too. Uh, color pa palettes are important for a variety of reasons. Um, it can be to distinguish yourself as a designer, whether you focus on a particular color palette and you become known to only focus on that color palette or if it's just to make sure that it um, falls in line with the designs that you're creating or the season that you wanna focus on. So color is a huge part of the design process. Cloth, number five, investigate and identify the fabrics for the garment in the collection. That's important too. Fabric suitability and making sure that the fabrics that you're choosing for the garment are suitable for that garment are very, very, very important. If you are making, once again, an outerwear garment, but you're not getting uh, fabric consistent with um, sort of like standing up to whatever elements you're um, creating it for, then it defeats the purpose unless it's just merely to look a certain way and not to actually do anything. So fabric suitability is extremely important. And as you begin to create the design, you'll see why it's so important to make sure that the fabrics you're choosing um, are suitable for the design. So let's move on to slide five. Target customer. This is a big one. I think a lot of times designers do this uh, last. Maybe they make their design and then afterwards they're like, all right, who is this for? How can I market this? Um, if you're intending on having this be a business, then it's hugely important that you know who the design is for. As we've discussed in previous slides, you need to make sure you know who you're creating this design for. So these are some of the questions that you should be asking yourself whether you, I encourage you to actually write these down, to not just think of it as like theoretical or sort of like toss it around in your design process. I encourage you to actually take these questions and write them down and answer them. And to go as far as maybe even collecting photographs of what this individual looks like. Because what you wanna do is get as much detail as possible of who this person is when you're creating a collection because it allows you to help you market, helps you really narrow down what the design is about. So is your dream client male or female? Is this a unisex garment for everyone? Um, what, what is the age of the person wearing the garment? Is this for children? Is this for adults? Where do they live? 
um, what city, what state do they live in? Those are important too. If you're designing for the metropolitan kind of look, you should focus on that. If it's more rural, you should also focus on what does that look like? Um, where do they work? What's the income? And the income is important just for you to visualize, you know, based on the income, where are they working? What are some of their social engagements? That should not have an effect on how you price your garment. So because the person has a higher or lower, uh, salary that shouldn't really determine how you price your garments but that's just something you should keep in mind when you're incorporating fabrics because that might have something to do with what you'll eventually be able to charge um, relationships if that's a factor whether or not they have pets if that becomes a factor how they spend their free time you again you just want to collect as much information as possible so that you can narrow down who this person is and how you can serve them with your designs. Um, where do they shop already? What do they already wear? So you, you, may, you may not be like reinventing the wheel, so to speak. You may just be taking something that they already wear and just making it better. And what are their aspirations? You know, are they, are they a working woman who intends to go, you know, and return or who wants to become a mother and stay at home? Is it vice versa? Like, what does that look like for the individual? What are they aspiring to be? Are there someone who's a student who wants to go into the professional field and wants to look more professional? Are they somewhat, you really need to figure out what they are and what they want to become. And again, if you can get as detailed as possible and even like collect photographs of people that you you know so that you can visualize what this personally actually looks like it'll be greatly helpful to you so let's move on to the next slide brand persona so is what is your collection called what um what is it doesn't have to be the name of your brand so a collection and a brand don't have to come they should um they should you should understand it's coming from the same person but it doesn't have to be the same name as your actual business for example my business is called lady cloth but when i do my collections they're not called lady cloth or designs by lady cloth you want to get a little bit more imaginative than just using the words created by or you want to actually name that collection because it just first of all it sounds more professional it sounds cleaner than just saying designs by or designed as. I mean, the person would understand that. Um, so for my collection that I'm gonna be sort of like going through with you here as an example, it was called the Monarch Collection. So my uh, business name or brand name is Lady Cloth, but that was the Monarch Collection. So just, you know, like I said, we wanna get as detailed as possible. So what would be the name of your collection and does that, as we go on to number two, does it represent your brand? So again, you can't just go way off as far as like what your brand is. So if your aesthetic is kind of girly and soft and light and airy, if you start to create like a really harsh grunge, it would sort of like not be compatible with your brand identity. So you want to make sure all those things flow together so that a customer can see the cohesion there. Um, and third, does it speak to, to, to the collection's inspiration? That's very important. So from where you got the inspiration from, as we needle down into the actual collection, can, can I, am I able to draw back into that initial inspiration? And I'll show you that shortly, what that looks like. So are those compatible? And inspiration can really come from just about anywhere as you'll see but you want to make sure that you didn't go too far off from what you were initially inspired to do because the whole um point of the initial inspiration is to sort of like get you at a starting point and if you end up somewhere completely different you might want to go back and see where you went off unless that's exactly where you want to be next step we're going to talk about creating a mood board so what is a fashion design mood board? So right here, I just basically started off this part of the presentation with giving you the end results of my mood board so you can see how it, the, what the end result was and then I can sort of go back and show you how I got to this end result for my mood board. So what is a mood board? A mood board is a visual diary of details and inspirations that will later serve as a guideline and constant source of further inspiration while finalizing the new collection. So 
this is sort of like, again, your springing off point. This is where you're going to start to say, uh, this is what I want the collection to be about. These are some of the things that have inspired it. And it could be little things. For me, it was um, seeing a, in this first image you see here, it was the colors, uh, the light pinks, the soft blues, and the sort of royal aesthetic of it, where you see the gilded pieces of furniture, like all those things sort of like begin my brain thinking of what I wanted my fabric to look like and what the collection was gonna be about. Um, the main function of a fashion mood board is to focus the designer's mind on the aesthetic, style, and direction of the collection. So that's the point of the mood board. It allows you to sort of like always go back and reflect on what initially got you inspired and what are some things that you want to incorporate into the designs based on what the images and different inspirations that you've stumbled upon. So before you get started, so before you actually get started on putting together your mood board, these are some questions you may want to ask yourself. What message are you trying to convey? So what is the uh, theme or the message that you're trying to convey? For my images, it was luxury. It was um, just this very sort of like uh, 19th century but not too literal aesthetic where like I said you had the gilded you had the um, brocade sort of design and and just these light soft feminine colors and it was it was really about like royal luxury but not as literal as like making these huge bouffant wigs or anything like that it was just more like that's the initial message very luxurious very soft very feminine but still had this very rich look to it um, you have to also see, are your images consistent? Are they all sort of like running together? If I was somebody looking at this and I didn't know anything about fashion design, could I look at this and see how all the images sort of like play on each other? You should also crop out and change the colors of your images prior to using them. Now there's different ways as we go to step four to get this done. If you're not like super familiar with how to use Photoshop or any of that software, you can simply go to a collage app and just start pile, piling on the images from there just so you can get an idea of what these things look like as you begin to put them together. Four, scan them into your computer using Photoshop or Affinity Photo. I added Affinity Photo because that's something that I have been using. You guys can look it up for yourself. It's very similar, I'm told, based on the reviews to Photoshop. I personally have never used Photoshop. I have Affinity Photo because it worked best for me as far as like pricing and the fact that I didn't really need something where I had to pay a subscription fee because I didn't use it nearly enough. So it was here and there where I would use it. What I love about Affinity Photo is, like I said, I, it has a lot of the features that I need. It allows me to have a little bit more control over editing my pictures and you know just getting better pictures. But it also allows you to do the cropping out of images and overlaying things. But that does require a learning curve. So you do need to learn how to use the software. And depending on like where you're at or if you're not really interested in trying to learn a new software, then I would just say use the collage app and just compile your images like that. Or you can even use Canva. Canva is also a really great place to sort of do it because it gives you more freedom and it has more templates. So you have Photoshop, Affinity Photo, and you have Canva, which I'm not sure if I wrote here. But those are all options you can use to edit your images. So you add your selection of images. Uh, six, consider your paper choices carefully, select them based on color, texture, weight, finish, and quality. And the reason why I added paper choices here because we are all very digital and we all love that, but some of us like to actually, you know, feel and touch things and we don't just want everything to be digital. So as we collect our photos, whether it's magazine cutouts, whether it's things we print off the internet, whether it's going into a fabric store, whether it's like printing pictures that we've um, taken pictures of, Sometimes people want to actually put that on like a huge poster board and put those images together. And that's that's fine too. Those are those are equally good ways to sort of like allow yourself to develop your mood board. It doesn't have to be either way, it's whichever one you're more comfortable with. Seven, overlapping your images and grouping them in a variety of ways. 
that's not just about like aesthetic that is also for you to see the way a combination of images and a combination of textiles look together so if you kind of just leave them all flat and separate you may not really see how they can culminate into one single design so overlapping them is a great way for you to be able to tell how these images and how these uh colors are going to combine together because they will eventually be the um colors you'll use in your finished garment okay slide 10. now we're talking about color palette so what is a color palette that's basically just uh just a coupling of some of the colors you intend to use in your finished design and you would normally get those colors from the images that you use in your mood board and as you as you start to bring in your fabric so once you kind of get an idea set on just a couple of colors and I would say keep them I think I have five here keep them between six five and six only because you don't want to get too crazy with adding too many colors because it gets difficult to incorporate all those different kinds of things. So I would say five max, maybe six. And, um, you know, just allow yourself to see what those colors look like together. Sometimes we just have favorite colors and then as we put them together, they really don't fit either the mood or the inspiration. They're kind of just like completely separate. Um, Pantone.com is, is a great place to review color concepts. Most designers in the industry go to Pantone um, to get their design uh, color inspiration. That's just something because they have so many colors. I'm sure a lot of you have heard like Pantone's color of the year. They're like the place to go if you want to just like play around and see what colors are available. Fabrics and textures. The fabric that you've chosen during your research, including trimming, prints and other embellishments that's important too as i was going through and collecting my materials for this collection I, I love the way velvet feels like i love velvet trim i like to use it in bows and different places like that um even little sort of like button styles if you wanted to have a specific button like miss elsa Sh shia pirelli she was somebody that was a, a designer that really focused a lot of her designs on intricate little things like buttons different places and stuff like that so you want to focus not just on the big picture stuff as we said before you also want to focus on those little things that can really make your design stand out because uh, a side note here I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago about you know she was trying to develop her collection and her, some of her frustration was well how am I supposed to do this when it's like you know everybody has like dresses like this or everybody has this and my advice to you as a designer is you can't reinvent the wheel. Like dresses are going to be dresses. Pants are going to be pants. You can't like revolutionize to an extent. You can't really revolutionize the process. If you can, great. But, you know, to make yourself a little less crazy, I would say focus on what you can do that makes you stand out as a designer. And that's really where things like color come into play, having a signature color, textures you use in the fabrics, little embellishments those are really where you're going to stand out and people are going to be able to say oh that is this particular person's garment because they always use this for me i love bows so between the color pink and a bow it's always somewhere incorporated in my designs however it is i don't know how it gets there but i always find a way to incorporate a bow or some form of some shade of pink in my design so that's just sort of the way i sort of like separate myself it's not revolutionary the concept of a bow or pink especially when you're talking about women's garments but it's consistent to my brand so people will become familiarized with it and almost expect it when they're looking at your design so finalizing your mood board so analyze your chosen images decide on a traditional or digital approach like we discussed print and compile your board so once you've come up with the images and the inspiration and you've uh, sort of like doodled it down into your color palette then you start to put everything together and whether you're using canva or like a physical uh, combination on poster board it's totally up to you but that's where you're going to sort of like step back and say okay this is the color this is the inspiration whether it's like i said a royal theme whether it's uh, oceanic aquatic whether it's a barn theme whether it's environmental whether it's floor whatever your theme comes to be you should be able to sort of step back and say that is that's that's the theme for this collection 
Okay, so here, once again, you just have the end result of my mood board. You can see, like, again, I use the pale blues. I have the sort of sheer that I'm going to also be incorporating, the black, the gold, um, this pale pink, this very royal sort of shiny, glittery essence. You also see my colors that I intend to incorporate. And these are just some of the colors that I'll intend that I'll intend to use. I, you know, took out some keywords that were going to really like resemble or like reflect, I should say, what the collection was about, which is elegance, graceful, demure, simple yet ostentatious. So it was going to be very simple skirts and jackets, but it was also going to be a little bit ostentatious, meaning that the fabrics that I was going to use were going to be a little bit more bold than you may see in everyday uh, suit jackets or skirts. Okay, so now we need to go on to the sketching portion. So, if you're not uh, an artist, if you don't sketch, if you're not any of that, I'll give you some tips on what you can use. Um, even as we go through here, you'll see there's just so many ways that you can sort of like, you know, get around the fact that you're not a great artist, but you should have enough skill to be able to create the sketches unless you're going to hire someone. And I'll just give like a brief sort of uh, personal opinion about hiring services. If you're a designer and you don't know how to do enough of the things that it takes to be a designer yourself, I'm not saying you can't hire someone eventually, but I think it's important for you to know how to do enough of it so that you can basically give feedback to someone who else, who is going to be doing it for you. Or at least when you're starting off as a cost effective measure, you want to sort of do as much as you can by yourself and sort of hire people where it is absolutely necessary and for me that would be like in the software aspect and those kinds of big picture things but when it comes to like sketching and stuff like that that's something you want to have like a, a just a bit of a handle on so sketching so you can use templates um, they're helpful they reduce the steps of trying to navigate symmetry and proportions in the figure prior to the start of a design so if you have a flat uh, template you can just sort of like trace around it and then put the garment on top of it instead of having to, you know, get the proportions down right and all those things that sort of take, you know, a little bit more practice to sort of get to that point. Detailing. Adding careful details to the sketch are important to create a blueprint of the design. Front and back views are also needed for each design. So you want to make sure that each design, which is a lot of work, but each design has a front and a back view. Um, just because you think it should be assumed what the back is going to look like, you might want to take the back to add a different sort of design or add something particularly special. So I would say always give a front and a back view of your design. Rendering. So the word rendering is just another word that is used for like the coloring of the sketch or like the uh, final stage of what it looks like colored. For this, you'll see this is sort of like the magic of Affinity Photo. And if you look a little bit closer, it, you know, I actually took uh, the fabric that I came up with as well as sequent screenshots and I was able to superimpose them so that you really got to see the texture of the jacket and the skirt. So that's something that, again, a benefit of just taking a little bit more time and learning special software because then you could do things like this. This could have been done by hand, um, you know, completely, but you really don't get the full um, vision of the garment, you know, as much as you would when you could sort of superimpose actual sequins and the actual fabric. So like I said, that's a benefit of actually um, becoming familiar with software like Photoshop or Affinity Photo. Okay, so we're moving on to slide 13, the flat sketch. Okay, so before we actually get into the flat sketch, I just wanted to take a couple of steps back in regards to a couple of things. Uh, shameless plugs, of course. So for the templates, if you're looking for some place to sort of get you started on tracing your templates and getting the templates going, I do have a section on my website, uh, ladycloth.com. If you go to ladycloth U, under uh, that heading, you'll see templates, and it just gives you a nice little variety of the different kinds of templates that you can use, and it includes the movement templates, the front and back template, and also as we go on to flats, it also gives you a template so that you can um, do your flats. So I definitely encourage you to go there and just sort of like collect those images for yourself and those uh, PDFs and templates for yourselves so that you can begin to practice 
um, creating these again for yourself because just like I said you want to become familiar with them before you either you know hire someone out to do it or you just want to learn how to do it yourself that way it's just like one less thing you have to uh, pay someone else to do so what is a flat sketch a flat sketch is a, a sketch of a garment that helps develop and better understand the construction of the garment. A flat is very helpful if you intend to mass produce your designs and need to submit them to a pattern maker or manufacturer. So just as much as the sketches are great and it sort of gives you an overall view of what the design is going to be about and it's a way for you to sort of add accessories and those things, if you intend to mass produce your creations, you're going to need, the person that's going to create it needs to see what this looks like as in a technical view. And one of those ways is they would see the flat. So the flat allows them to see a variety of things such as like lines and placement and flow without sort of like the extra noise of you know the actual sketch and the accessories and all the other things you do to make it visually appealing a flat is simply that just a flat sketch of your design and it gives a, a basic front and back and it lets the manufacturer know okay I want a seam down the back and I want two I want princess seams along the back and along the front you know I want a bit of a puff on the shoulders it allows them to really break down uh, what you want your garment to look like and again, for that, I do have in my, uh, if you go to my uh, Lady Cloth View on Teachable, I teach you all of these things. I teach you how to create your illustrations. I teach you how to create flats. And what's the great thing about that course is it gives you all of these templates free. It comes with the course, so it allows you to get the, the full detailed instruction about how to create flats and movements and different sketches for your garment. And you also get the accompanying uh, template plates for free and you also have this course for lifetime so you can go back as many times as you need to go in order to sort of like practice and, and hear someone basically tell you this is how you uh, get to where you need to go as far as this uh, illustration so I definitely encourage you if this is something that you want to do I definitely encourage you if you have no idea how to do it or even if you only have a little bit of an idea how to do it definitely just take that extra bit of investment and go and you know learn how to actually do these things because if you don't you will have to pay someone to create flats for you as much as you have to get a pattern making and a manufacturer now for example if you found if you got courses or taught were taught how to do a flat and make your own patterns which I also teach at ladycloth.u um, on teachable then you would just need a manufacturer. So you, as you can see, that's sort of like as much as you can learn how to do and do efficiently is where your cost is going to be cut where you need it to be cut as far as like developing your creation. So let's move on to slide 14. So this is what things look like when you sort of have your inspiration down, when you have your color palette, you have your sketch front and back, you have the fabric inspirations that we're going to talk about, and a front. So when you are presenting sort of like your full scope of what the collection is going to be about, whether it's for your personal use or if you need to submit this someplace to have someone redo these, this is a really helpful tool so they can really see where you're coming from fabrics. So in slide 15 we're going to talk about fabrics. Fabrics are huge. Fabrics are the lifeblood of your collection. They are what truly distinguishes your work from others. How you use a fabric is vital as a designer. So as I said before, you cannot reinvent the wheel. So you cannot, you know, you can only go so far as to sort of like revolutionize pants or dresses. The way you can sort of like stand out is making sure your fabric is distinguishable to you and having a familiarity with fabrics is also very important so you need to be able to as we discussed in previous slides know what each fabric is used for and make sure that they are complementing to the design that you're using so for example if uh, I mean you can do these things but it's just not something that is it's going to be harder to work with if I'm making a ball gown you don't want to use the same material you would use to make like a lampshade and that sounds really silly but it really comes down to that's just like an obvious example it can be something as simple as just not using the appropriate fabrics for the project you're trying to complete okay slide 16 creating a fabric story so collect 
collecting swatches, referencing garments, going to stores that sell similar um, garments to what you want to create, you want to feel, you want to touch. You also want to go in and without being like, too weird about it go in and sort of peek into the tags and see what the fiber content see what these garments are made out of and that way it'll help you as you're going into fabric stores you'll be able to say well I saw this great you know dress or whatever and it was made out of this particular material and you can go in and actually say is this a material that you feel comfortable uh, working with and you want to create you want to also go into those fabric stores and just create get little swatches of those things because those are going to be what helps you sort of like put these things together and see if it works for your collection but also see if you're comfortable with working with these fabrics once again on lady cloth in, in teachable i do hold a different separate course that just talks about fabrics and textiles and it really breaks down everything so that you are more familiar with the different kinds of textiles and and what is used to make what and it's, it gives you a lot more detail than i could possibly hear as to the importance of understanding um different things like warped and weft and you know grain lines and all those kinds of different things that are important when you're creating your design. So I definitely encourage you to just check those courses out because they're going to be sort of like what helps you, again, have as much knowledge as you need so that you don't have to constantly look for people to assist you in the creation stages to the completed design. And here you can see where I've incorporated the, the sequin, where I've incorporated the velvet trimming that I was talking about, how the fabric that I picked up sort of has that royal aesthetic theme where you can see like the rose gold metallic brocade fabric. And you can see that I also incorporated the lines that I had on my flat. So it just shows you how I took all those initial inspirations and all those blueprints and just in uh, formulated into the end result that was this complete design. And it might seem like a lot of steps, but in order for your vision to be clear from start to finish, you want to make sure that you go through all the steps. Okay, so as we sort of close out, start to conclude the presentation, I wanted you guys to see uh, just how the collection looks from the sketch to the uh, finishing stages. And it just shows you some of the sketches that I created as well as some of the garments for the finished production. You can see that I also incorporated children's dresses because again, I do formal designs for special occasions for children and women. So those are my target customers, women and girls who are looking for beautiful dresses for special occasions. So this just shows you what this came out to. I also wanted to go into this last slide and show you guys the mood board template. So sometimes it's hard to sort of like figure out like where am I supposed to put this? How is this supposed to look? So here I've attached just a helpful template so you can sort of um, use this as a guide to help you develop your own mood board. Now it doesn't have to obviously look exactly like this, but if you're completely like lost and not sure how to do or not sure how to get started, this template is going to be really helpful to you in order for you to um, get started. And in regards to just getting all this information, um, if you go after this presentation, if you go into ladycloth.com, if you go um, under Ladycloth U and events, you'll be able to download um, the presentation as a PDF so you can keep it for your record. So that pretty much concludes the Design Near Collection presentation. Um, again, I just want to reiterate a couple of things. One, the templates that you are, if you're looking for templates, or if you're looking for some instructional courses on fashion illustration and becoming familiar with that, or if you just want to learn how to uh, design and the whole fashion design process from start to finish, whether it's the history right down to actually making a garment, I teach courses on, on Teachable at Lady Cloth U where I take you through that entire process and it's for, you know, I have beginner courses courses as well as advanced courses so that you can sort of like either take the master courses or you can just select the course that you're folk you want you're interested in learning more about and go from there 
also uh, here on the YouTube channel weekly I upload videos and it, we just go through different sort of like instructional videos on how to do different things in fashion whether it's uh, a skirt uh, a top how combining those pieces together can make a dress I do so long so if you're not quite ready to go into the uh, purchasing stage that's fine if you want to just see kind of like what I do a little bit more then definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel and that way you can uh, weekly at least get a small dose of what I do on in my uh, teachable classes so basically I hope you guys were able to pick up a couple of things um, again download this keep it for your records and I hope this helps you be able to begin to think and develop what you want to do with your designs as far as becoming a designer and uh, I hope to see you guys in future classes or right here on the YouTube channel